Welcome back to another video brought to you by ISCA Engineering. In today's video we will be talking about more control devices. This video is a continuation in the motor control series. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, I highly recommend watching those before continuing this video. The things we will cover are devices such as pressure switch, float switch, limit switch, and a few more. Before we dive into the video, if you aren't subscribed then please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and leave a comment. Also hit the notification button so you won't miss any of the new videos uploaded. If you haven't seen the last video, or have simply forgotten what a control device is, let's refresh what they are. A control device is a component used to turn on or off current flow in an electrical circuit. Let's first talk about the limit switch and shift to the others. A limit switch is an electromechanical device that can be used to control machinery as part of a control system, as a safety interlock, or even used to count objects passing by. Because of their reliability, high accuracy, and repeatability, they can practically be used in any industrial setting and are also able to control multiple devices. Most limit switches are composed of three main components. These components are the actuator, the body, and the terminals. The actuator is the part that comes in contact with the target. The body is where you will find the terminals that will be wired. The contacts inside the body can consist of normally open and normally closed and can be either maintained or momentary. In the example we have displayed the way the limit switch symbols are drawn. They consist of NC, normally closed, NO, normally open, NCHO, normally closed held open, and NOHC, normally open held closed. As of now, you should be familiar with the NC and NO abbreviations and meaning. Let's go over the other two mentioned. The normally closed held open means that the contacts have been wired as normally closed, but something is keeping the switch actuated which keeps the contacts open. The same concept is used for the normally open held closed. It's been wired as normally open, but something is keeping the switch actuated which keeps the contacts closed. Both of these contacts will keep their state until the force holding the switch in the activated state is removed. The circuit shows how the limit switch will operate. The PB starts the motor as long as the limit switch is not tripped or actuated. The motor will turn off when the limit switch has been actuated or the stop button is pressed. A temperature switch is a device that monitors temperature and opens or closes a circuit whenever a predetermined temperature is reached. It is used in heating and cooling applications where temperature must stay within certain limits. Most of these switches will contain a NC and NO set of contacts but can also come with just one of these contacts. In the example provided, when the selector switch is positioned in the auto position, the temperature switch will open and close accordingly to the predetermined set temperature. When the temperature rises above the set value, it will close and turn the motor on. When the temperature drops below the preset value, it will open the contacts and de-energize the motor. Pressure switches are devices used to monitor and control systems that use pressurized fluids. When a certain pressure has been reached, depending on the set value, it will make or break a circuit. In the circuit provided, whenever the switch is closed, the compressor will turn on. After the pressure reaches 60, the first pressure switch will open. Once the compressor has reached a pressure of 105, the compressor will turn off. As long as the switch is on, the compressor will start back after the pressure has fallen below 60. Float switches are devices used to detect the level of a liquid. It can provide automatic control for motors that pump liquid from or into a tank. As the level of liquid rises or falls, it will either close or open a circuit respectively. Due to its reliability, it's one of the most frequently used devices used for monitoring liquid levels. The way it works is utilizing a magnetic reed switch, which consists of two contacts sealed in a glass tube. When a magnet comes close to the two contacts, they become attracted to each other and touch, allowing current to pass. When the magnet moves away, the contacts demagnetize and de-energize the circuit. In the circuit, whenever the float switch reaches a preset low level, the float switch contacts close and activate the motor. The flow switch is the last device being covered. 
A flow switch is a device used to monitor the flow rate and pressure of things such as air, steam, and liquids through a duct, system, or loop. The circuit provided shows the way a flow switch is drawn and operated. If the flow switch has enough fluid flow to overcome the spring tension on the paddle, then it will close the contacts and turn the pilot light on. There are many different types of flow switches, but the working principle is quite the same. The majority of them have a paddle or magnetic trigger of some sort, which is connected to a circuit and placed through the channel where the substance will be passing through. The paddle is rotated by whatever substance is passing through and sends a signal back to a transducer. The transducer takes the signal and passes it to a transmitter. The transmitter measures this reading against a predefined set of parameters and performs whatever signal or action is required to adjust the behavior of components and mechanisms. That concludes the control devices mentioned in the beginning of the video. Knowing how control devices work and are used will help you in choosing the right control devices for your application. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. In the next video, we will be looking at sensors. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at ISCA underscore engineering underscore. The links will be provided in the description. There we do daily posts on electricity, controls, automation, and much more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.